We're back, baby. <laughs> Episode. Is that a claw? It's a nine. I'm making oh, a nine. nine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Episode nine. Here we are. Episode nine. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you're enjoying it. A few more listeners last week. I think we really? spiked up. Yeah, another three or four. Let's not get carried away by thinking we're uh, anything special. But hey, yeah, um, no one took us up on the comment, so I don't know. You think they had trouble like understanding the instructions? Nope. nope. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, Rich, and Jerry, we're here with you. Trail Whispers podcast on a Thursday afternoon. Fun stories, chiropractic care. Life's an open book, so sit back in your chair. We're walking down the trail of life, so come along with Trail Whispers podcast. You can't go wrong. Nope, not at all. (laughs) Not at all. Chance. I mean, we could probably have like a, you know, click here to literally like we'll Venmo you $5 if you leave a comment and nobody would do it. Let's make that as, do you mind making that as an offer? Are you flush right now? I'd I'd throw, I'd throw five bucks in there. A dollar. Yeah. So two bucks. We'll each do a dollar. Yes. That's a deal. So we'll do a dollar for everyone that leaves a comment. You can't well, leave more than one comment. Where do we cap to... out at, though? Like, how many? The first five? How about the first ten? I'll spend ten bucks on this. Would you? Yeah. Is it now? They have to be a subscriber, though. Let's right. make sure that they're a subscriber. Yep. And right. do we want any other stipulations? We're going to try and get some more listeners in on this too. So you have to be a subscriber. And you have to leave a comment. Um, I know what you're saying. These two boomers are desperate for interaction. <laughs> and that's true. That's very true. Um, I don't have anything else to say. Hey, I like honesty. We're looking to boost our, yeah. Self-esteem. Grassroots, grassroots uh, boost for us here. Paying yeah. the people. Mm-hmm. Boost the drink. The oh drink we drink before bed. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't there an old person drink called Boost? I'm pretty sure. Probably. It sounds like the Aldi's brand of uh, Insure. Yeah. Oh, maybe I'm thinking of Insure. Boost drink. Let me see what comes up. Yeah, it's Boost. This is, is it the Boost? Stuff. Yeah, it's take. It's redirected me to Amazon here. But yeah, this is okay. Boost. What are the flavors Bo- available? All right, boost flavors. Um, let's look. Let me hang on. Let me get back to Safari. I'm on the World Wide Web right now. We nice. Got, uh, Can you tell folks here. how to access the World Wide Web for the yeah. the boomers <laughs> and my wife? Uh, yeah, you go and you're going to type in the search bar www. And that stands for World Wide Web. And then you put in your website. I put in .google.com. You can type anything in there and it's going to come up for you. It's pretty exciting. Looks like we got a strawberry boost, four delicious flavors on walmart.com. Uh, chocolate, strawberry, they got a breakfast essentials. They got a lot going on. Mm. Go on down to your local Walmart and pick up a case of Boost today. It's got yeah, energy, boost. protein. Uh, boost sounds like a win for, uh, for breakfast. Uh, is it soy milk or what kind of milk do we have going on? They, the top they, do, ingredient? Have, they do have soy. There we go. There we go. So, yeah, um, soy, a soy boy. If you want to be a soy boy, drink some boost. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. By now, I'm sure you've heard the theme song. 
um, trail whispers. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you enjoyed the upgrade. We tried. Speaking of soy, I'm covering up my, uh, my shirt. It's a little tight, so I don't want to show too much off here on the, on the World Wide Web. <laughs> Dude, that shirt is, yeah. I mean, it, you fill it out. Yeah, it's a little tight. I'm in a, I'm in a bulking season right now. I've been bulking for the last 33, 33 and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was in uh, the Adidas outlet. I told this story on the last podcast. I was in the Adidas outlet, and I picked up this shirt, and I had like a lime green shirt, and this old black lady was in there, and she, I, I just turned to her, and I said, hey, what do you think? And she said, I like a man with some color. Ooh. And so then we got this, which is basically the same color as my skin, and it is a little tight, so I'll sit like this here tonight. It does. It does. <laughs> It accentuates the paps. <laughs> Something. Been doing a lot of push-ups. That's what's been happening. So, yeah, a lot of push-ups. Dude, can I request that you're buried in that shirt? Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> okay. Yeah, why waste a perfectly good suit? Yeah. Throw me in a skin-colored skin colored T-shirt. They'll remove my organs so it won't be so tight. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll have them. I'll make sure that whenever they do like the powder on your face, I want them to match that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Can you color match the t-shirt he's wearing, please? It would mean the world to him. Everyone's like, "Oh my goodness, he's naked in there." It's like, "No, no, he's wearing a t-shirt." <laughs> Got it at the outlets. <laughs> Maybe have like from the knees down exposed too, also powdered up. Yeah, to match. And just like, <laughs> there's a three compartment casket, and like the middle compartment's closed. And it's like, what in the world? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That funeral is going to be a good time. Hopefully, you guys are, hopefully, you're there. Well, yeah. You'll, you'll be there, not you're there now. If you're listening to this while you're there, that means it was pretty, pretty in my immediate future. I don't, yeah, I'm ready for it, but I'd rather just hang on a little bit longer. So. Yeah, a little bit more. Yeah, why not? Isn't the will to live an interesting thing? Mm hmm. It's crazy, mm -hmm. you know, you, and like, you know, you hear of suicide and stuff like that, and that's obviously a tragic thing, but like, people do some crazy things to survive. Yeah. Like, you read these stories about guys like cutting their arm off that's cut under, a, that's under a boulder. And it's like, man, I can't even get myself to do 50 push ups a day. This guy's cutting his arm off <laughs> under a boulder. <laughs> I don't know. Next level. Yeah. Speaking of, that's funny you brought that up because my wife asked me the question. So we've been watching the show alone, which you had mentioned you I think episode watched. one. Okay. So we've watched a few. Dude, it's a fun show to watch. My kids are mm -hmm. now, when we're outside, they're building shelters. That's right. They're yeah. looking for stuff to like make their fires. Um, so it's been kind of cool from that standpoint and inspiring because I feel like watching these people inspires me to realize that I need to learn a lot more for survival. Mm. But she wanted me to ask, on a loan, okay, she said, who would survive the longest? And here's the people she gave me. Okay. You? No. Her? No, definitely not, no. My dad? And Dr. B. Oh, man. I don't know. I could see Dr. B, like, lining up a grizzly bear or something. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Getting, getting I him think, aligned. I think everybody's out one night in one night. I told my wife, she's like, you need to have more confidence in me. And I was like, I do. But the moment a bear is outside of your tent, or not even your tent, your tarp, and it's growling, you're on that phone as quickly as you can to be just taken out. I don't know. I think so as long as like my diabetes medication and everything was okay, I think I can make it, Jerry. I mean, alone so? is basically how I live my life right now. <laughs> so I'm already right doing the, the hardest part of the show, like by <laughs> myself. In my home. And so, like, what is That's a bear? True. 
other than a companion. Yeah. You know? So I really think I could do it. I've done some longer, I've done some camping in my life and shelter building and stuff like that. I don't know. I do they like let you take it. medication on the show or no? They wouldn't let me go on the show because I could die. Yeah. Well, I was yeah. wondering because there was a lady that was on there that had MS and had to be like emergency evacuation because yeah. her MS started to act up. And I was like, oh, I wonder if they would let a diabetic just to see if he could live or if he'd die. <laughs> they should do like an alone, like diabetes edition. <laughs> 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 wouldn't, that, wouldn't you watch it though like oh. you know it's only gonna be like four episodes and like there's gonna be at least one casualty but <laughs> like we're not talking about oh. seasons here oh. and then you gotta do like an alone like wheelchair edition or like some <laughs> other kind of serious problem and just like let's really get tested you know dude how about an alone with all life coaches out there Oh, just just speaking positivity into existence. Yeah, yeah. I that would be fun to watch, or like alone where you could bring your life coach with you, and like your life coach is like staying in like a nice tent, and he's eating real food, and he's like, "Come on, Jeremy, you can do it. You know, you got this. You are able. You are strong. Say it with me, like." <laughs> All this garbage. <laughs> I would totally love to watch that. Dude, that would be fun. People would be That'd freaking be out. Maybe we yeah. could just do this in your backyard. I mean, we could we could just be a spinoff of Alone. <laughs> like this, yeah, in the in the city alone. I don't know. Yeah, I'd be it'd be fun. But the motivation for the show though is the half million dollars. Mm -hmm. like that's where it's at like i don't know i feel like i could endure a lot of stuff for a half million dollars mm -hmm. yeah like basically you wouldn't have to work for like the next five or six years if you didn't want to i don't know like yeah you could do a lot with a half a million dollars it's fascinating to see these people that are impressive that peel off on the show it's you know, because you think they're going places and then sometimes you'll find, you know, it's these people that you wouldn't peg and all of a sudden you're like, man, they are just, some of those women on there are, they are beasts. Yeah. I mean, they're impressive. Yeah. So. The thing that's surprised, there was one episode where the guy was like catching all of this salmon, but he had a plan to ration it. So he would only eat like one, one filet of salmon like every day or something. Well, Dave. Oh, okay. Yep. I don't I don't want to ruin the episode for you. Have you watched the end of that one? We've seen it, yeah. Okay. So he basically like starves because yeah. he keeps wanting to ration and the guy like the medic is like, Look, you can't do it like that. You just need to be eating. Like I don't know. It was interesting because he had all this food stockpiled when they were taking yeah. him out. And he's like, I got all this food and they're like <laughs> Sorry, you're starving. Dude, you have he to looked go. so bad when they showed yeah. before and after. He looked like he aged fifty years. Yeah. With my luck, I'd go on there and I'd I'd end up gaining weight somehow. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like before and after. It's like, did he get a second chin on the island? A third, third chin? <laughs> it's like, how did he do it? We have no idea how he did. It. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. That'd be crazy. <laughs> You'd be the first one in history to actually gain weight. He doubled like, his weight. He's it's like the, four bills, emergency even. The Biggest Loser. Have you ever seen The Biggest Loser? I've seen that before, yep. They'll do the weigh-ins, and it's the guy weighs like 470 pounds. And then he'll get on the scale, and it's like, Jamal, you gained 17 pounds. And his teammates are like, come on, Jamal. And it like flashes back to like videos in the kitchen where Jamal's sneaking jello pudding packs. And yeah, dude, dude I, I used mean, to watch that show all the time. Um, did you? Yeah. Yeah, a long time ago. But yeah, when I was like, I don't know how long ago it was, 10 years ago, I guess. Wow. Yeah, it's lies. it's a fascinating show. My wife likes to watch it. That's why I've watched it with a few times. But it's just 
it's fascinating to me, like when people start hitting these milestone numbers, like I just, you know, it's like, okay, people are in the 200 range. That's cool. But when you start hitting three, I mean, the next sure. step is four and some of these people, I mean, they're, they're 400 plus, And I'm like, dude, how did you, how'd you get to this place? Yeah, there's I mean, a the couple fascinating where part. the guy, the one guy on the show, like used to be in the NFL or something. And like, I kind of understand that a little more because they eat such an insane amount of food mm -hmm. when they're training that he just didn't stop eating that, but he stopped training. So I'm like, okay, that makes sense. But like when you're just like chilling at the house, eating boxes of hostess cupcakes, it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> okay. So what would be your, knowing what you know about alone, what would be your strategy going into it? Would you try to put on a lot of like fat? Oh, that's a good question. I think what I would do is like a month before I went on the show, I would quit eating I would quit eating sugar and carbs. But I would be eating like a lot of calories, a lot of fats and all that kinds of stuff. Mhm. Mm because I wouldn't want to go on and have like a sugar addiction or something where I am like crashing. Right. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. like all the food you're going to find out there is going to be meat. Basically. Sometimes they'll find like berries or mushrooms or something like that. Or mm -hmm. one dude's eating trees. I'm like, what in the world? Dude. But yeah. The guy that got the, uh, he won, I think. Cut. No. Well, I know one guy was eating tree, something from pine trees. Yeah. He was eating he like constipation. Yeah. Crazy. But that would kind of be my strategy is I would mm -hmm. go in like that. <clears throat> and then I'd probably take like a bunch of glucose like the day before. Like, I don't know. I feel like you need your glycogen store to be high. I don't know. Maybe I'm just making this up. But... You'd probably crash instantly. You go from. You think? Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> How about I don't know. This? You know, Would one of yeah. your 10 items be a, a pack of Oreos? <laughs> <laughs> Family size. Family size. No, I guess that's what – I guess I would just, you know, try to get off of carbs and sugar because that's what you're going to have to be adjusted to. And I'd try to put on as much weight as I could, you know. The downside would be is if you go home on day one and you just put on a whole bunch of weight for <laughs> one day, that would be a bummer. But, yeah, that's <laughs> – that's my strat, I think. He, he went from 240 up to like 298, stayed out yeah. there a day, came back at 301. <laughs> so you gained weight out there. Yeah, and snacks on the plane ride home, free condiments <laughs> or free, yeah, complimentary <laughs> snacks. Um, yeah. It's, what would be your strategy? I think, I think there's a balance. I think I've seen enough people that had – that were too lean, like our guy Dave, that he was the one that you're talking about with that had all the food but was rationing it out. I, I feel like you might go with like a little bit of extra, maybe like a like 20 pounds is not going to hurt you because the, the way that they're trying to look at, you know you're going to lose weight. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to win, you're trying to make sure that your your body's not unhealthy. But I'm I'm fascinated <clears throat> by two things. Sometimes these people, they're so smart. They make it like their home and they build it and they make these awesome shelters. And I'm like, that needs to be, that'd be my number one strategy, protection immediately. Mm -hmm. Sure. Some of these people that live in these shanties, like for six, you know, they're 45 days in on the show. I'm like, what are you doing with yourself all day? Are like, you, you building like a legit log cabin? I think I'm building a legit log cabin. Because yeah. I'm trying to think winter's coming, protection from animals. And then I think I would be going with that approach of, yeah, you know, obviously like fishing is one thing. But I would, dude, I would be hunting something else. I'd be looking for a bear. I'd be looking for a deer. I mean, something to, um, you know, to be able to cook up. Because then you're going to have plenty of fat, plenty of meat. I'm yeah. amazed at how many people kind of put fishing stuff out and come check on it like 
a week or two weeks later. Sure. And sure. then they have no food and they're like, oh, no more food. And I'm like, well, you're not exactly diligent. So yeah, your whole day has got to be about food. Like you've got to yeah. set yourself up while you've got all that energy at the beginning. Like you've got to spend like three days on a shelter and like, yeah, yeah. You know, we want to film an episode of MTV Cribs with your shelter. Like this thing's yeah. doped out, sweet fireplace, yeah. building shelves in there and all kinds of stuff. Nice bed, insulated that because in the winter, there's going to be days where it's going to be so cold where you're going to go outside for a couple hours and you're just going to spend the whole day in there. Like this thing's got to be, you got to be yeah. ready. You got to have yeah. firewood. Like you got to get yourself in a routine of like in the morning, we're going chopping firewood and we're doing that for two hours. And then we're going to go forage for an hour. We're going to take a nap. We're going to go out for another hour. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I'm with you on that. Yeah. It's a, it's kind of neat to see that, but that'd be my strategy would be shelter. And then I'd be wanting to get a, uh, something large. So I think I'd be after, you know, a deer or something. It's amazing sometimes on those shows where there'll be locations where like, oh, you can't, they, you could get a deer, but they're protected. And I'm like, that's yeah, where my that's camera bogus. would be shut off and I'd be out there shooting a deer. Yeah. It's like, but oh, I, well, I just right found person. this deer. I just, I just found this deer here on the ground. <laughs> like, yeah, that's bogus. When they do stuff like that, yeah. they're like, he could, but this is an endangered species. It's like, no, dude. This dude is an endangered species. He's trying to win a half a million dollars. Let's kill whatever we have to. I dude, I will say I felt bad. So obviously the episode you were talking about, there was a girl on there that she she got pulled out of it as well. Um, that episode, do you remember Dave was the guy that rationed the food out? And there's a girl that also made it. She ended up coming in second place. Okay. I think I remember so, this. Okay, it's been so a long she time. Came in, she also got pulled off because of medical reasons. So they brought back on another episode all of these past um, – all these people that had been on previous episodes. Yeah. And she was on there. And, dude, I felt so bad for her. Day four. And she was she was cooking. I was rooting for her. And she, something – she's going to pull a, a fish off of a um, – off of – Yeah, uh, I remember that. Stringer. Do you remember that? And got that mm -hmm. hook stuck in her hand. Yeah. Dude, I don't know. I was shocked at how people, not everyone has a, a multi-tool with them. I'm like, that has to be an essential. Mm -hmm. You have to know, like, this is going to come in handy at some point. And I was shocked when she tried to take a blade to try to twist that, that hook out. And I'm like, that's next level pain. Yeah, dude, you've got to have the multi-tool. I feel like that's a no-brainer, you know? Yeah. Like get, go get a real nice one with like all the stuff on there. Get one with like a magnifying glass on there and yep. all the little annoying stuff that you really wouldn't normally want on there, but get it all. Get the one with the leather punch or whatever. Like let's do everything. Let's get a hundred accessories on this thing. <laughs> Cell phone that flips out so you can make calls. Like everything tick tock what's going on yeah like everything <laughs> everything needs to be on there so speaking i don't know of, uh, speaking of survival um our sponsor this for this segment is a survivalist he's actually survived himself out in the wild you want to kind of share a little bit about that story and then also him as a sponsor yeah so we you know we've got a friend listeners <laughs> viewers um his name is Wash Jilcox, and he is, uh, he's been on a, a, a lone inner city episode that they filmed in Portland, and he was gathered around a, a burn barrel with several other contestants there, and uh, really did a great job. So, um, yeah, yeah, it, it, he's an inspiration. He survived that. He actually won the grand prize half mil. And he opened up an optical shop in a suburb of uh, Oklahoma City called Edmond, Oklahoma. So it's called Enjoy Optical. And they sell custom frames, designer stuff. But what's even more exciting than their brick and mortar location 
because me in Ohio, I can't go there, but they do actually have pop-up locations in every Dollar General store nationwide. So Dollar General, if you remember, is is the company that just throws up um, those those steel buildings in like two days and then fills the aisles with crap. Um, yeah, there's enjoy optical pop-ups in those in those stores, every one. So there's thousands of locations and you get the same service. And that's what people say. And Jeremy's asked it before. Do you get the same service if you go to Dollar General versus going to the actual brick and mortar and enjoy optical in Edmond? Yes. Yes, you do. <laughs> and it's the same level of care. It's the same employee treatment and hygiene level and the same feel. It's got a very like Swedish Nordic feel to the locations, to the pop-up locations. Check them out. Um, and we actually have a sponsorship deal with them, believe it or not. And so the deal that was presented to us by Wash Jillcox was that we would actually, Jeremy, buckle up for this. We would actually okay. be paying him $2,500 per ad read. So... I don't know. I'm going to call our attorneys at the law offices of Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe and <laughs> try to figure out what's going on. Because I was under the impression that we would be getting money for this, like most of our sponsors. So, But regardless, while we're figuring out what's going on with the money, you head down to an Enjoy Optical location, uh, one of the Dollar General stores or the location there in Edmond, Oklahoma, and tell them we sent you. And you're going to use the code uh, SCAM. And you're going to get $10 off your first pair. And you're going to get a free pair of lenses. So not a yeah. bad deal. Yeah, not maybe you deal. could share like, share about a recent experience at a Dollar General. Just so people know, like, hey, it's worth my time to go to this pop-up location in you know, downtown Canton. Do I sure. truly get the same feel? Yeah, hang on. I actually have a pair of the lenses. So here we go, <clears throat> viewers. Um, this is a pair of the lenses that I got at one of the pop-up locations here. So um, not a bad, not a bad look, not a bad uh, pair. And so this is how you can tell a good pair of glasses if they can do this. This is what you're looking for, okay? And uh, yeah, you can see the the finish on the frames here. It's really nice. It's a matte. It's actually uh, uh, you know, says the word China, but I, I don't think that's where they were made. I think they were made in the USA. But, yeah, there's some writing on the inside. They're nice, real nice. So head down there, pick up a pair. Like I said, $10 off, $10 off your first was pair. Was there someone so. to help fit you with those, or did you just walk oh, yeah. in? And Yeah, they'll actually cool. go ahead and measure your head, and they'll ask you a couple questions. <laughs> they'll do a quick vision test. If you need a prescription, they'll get that taken care of. And if you don't need a prescription, um, they'll just they'll suit you up and get you out of there. So mm, nice. Can't yeah, beat it. Good, good quality stuff. So thanks yeah. to our sponsor for the alone segment there. Um, yeah. Enjoy optical and wash Jillcox. We appreciate you wash. Thank you for that. Um, Jerry, let me ask you this. Would you I just thought of this idea and say no if you want. So, viewers, this is how little we plan this out. This is how genuine it is. Um, I feel like we should do an alone in your backyard with our boys sometime. Just Dude, like, that'd be one, fun. like a one-nighter. Just, yeah, like a Friday night into a Saturday we set up and we build a shelter. And, yeah. Let's do it. We yeah, can we do can, it. We can bring some real basic food items like a can of beans or something like that, but... Other than that, like let's try to shoot some squirrels or something or Oh yeah. Be fun. No, I'm I'm all for that. It's actually funny you said that because we're gonna um be going to Kentucky at some point this summer and I was telling uh Rowan, I was like, you know, we need to have all of the boys camp out and um maybe we'll do like a little episode of alone. So that'll be good to do like maybe a precursor on that and then when the weeks you have the boys Yeah. We could do a fun night like that and Maybe your mom could watch your daughter. They could have a fun night or something like that, or your sister. Yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. So yeah, that'd be awesome. Be cool. Um, yeah, be a fun. Yeah, 
I'd enjoy it. I'm looking at my notes um, here. Yeah, do you want to share the story? Obviously, you were talking about your T-shirt earlier, and that that reminded me of that story. Maybe you can share back from days gone by. Yeah, so I don't know what was going on. I guess I'm always just like looking for approval from people, and I don't know why. <laughs> But I was looking for approval from you and Josh in the back of my Ford Taurus, I think is where we were at. Does that sound right? Or was it? Yeah, I, I was driving. Yeah, I don't and... know why you were driving my car. I, was it your car? Maybe it wasn't my car. Maybe it was another car. I think it was car. a rental car. I typically okay. run a car for the, the road trips. Yeah, and so I have on an no undershirt. house is up in the front with me. Yeah. I had on an undershirt, and then I had on a button-down short sleeve dress shirt. We were going to, like, a church service or something, and so that's what I had on. And I was like, you guys – one of you had said something like, are you going to wear an undershirt under that, Jay Rich? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I always wear an undershirt. And they're like, one of you, I forget. I don't remember the whole scenario. Maybe you remember it better, but it's like, oh, I don't, I don't know if you should wear an undershirt with that. Sure, I don't think you're – you know, look good or whatever. So then, like, I end up shirtless in the back of this car, like, changing out and, like, okay, let's take off the undershirt and let's just put the dress shirt on. So then I do that and then it's like, oh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you should leave the undershirt on. And so then I'm shirtless again in the back of this car, putting the undershirt back on, putting the dress shirt back on. And then it's just, like, messing with me. And it's like, I, well, oh, actually, now that you... Now that you put it back, like, you should take it off again. And so it's just like on again, off again, on again, off again, you know. It felt like Michael Scott in that episode of The Office where he's like, snip, snap, snip, snap. And he's talking about getting fixed. So, yeah, it was a mess. Dude, yeah. I, I remember Josh being in the back because I'm dying laughing, trying not to laugh. And I think I can remember looking back, and he's just, like, helping you. He's helping you take it off. Yeah. I was getting assistance from another man in the back of a car to undress myself. It's ridiculous. Who himself was probably wearing, like, a, a linen cloak. At the time, he was – at the time, he was still rolling in, like, regular clothes. Yeah. You know, he was he was wearing, like, neckties and stuff to church at the time. So, yeah. It's interesting. But yeah, I was changing, putting it back on, taking it back off, putting it back on, taking it back off. It was just, I was insecure. I think I was 19, 18, oh, 19. Yeah. yeah, you're trying to figure out. Well, you're also trying to think like, okay, what are the ladies going to like? And I think we were sure. playing on that a little bit. Like, yeah, we, you know, it looks good with the t-shirt off because it kind of reveals the solid upper chest. And then... I think Josh said, yeah, maybe a little too much. Maybe there's a little too much cleavage. I think you were sure. trying to be modest. Dude, it was hilarious. Yeah. What a fun was, memory. That, that was ridiculous. Dude, that yeah. was probably the trip that I got jacked up. Remember that? Oh, with your lip? Yeah. yeah. What was that guy's name you ran into? Tim. Tim. Oh, yeah, little Tim. Was, Just... His last name was kind of goofy, I feel like. Can't remember. Yeah, uh, it'll maybe it'll come to us. Yeah, but I remember that because yeah, you so we were playing basketball and like I don't what happened? His elbow hit you in the mouth or something? No, we weren't we weren't even really playing competitively, just like screwing around. Someone threw a bounce pass and I just bent over to to you know, grab it and he reached down and hit me with the corner of his head on the corner of my mouth and mm. dropped me. And apparently, like, it split my lip right here, so my lip was hanging down. I kind of come to, and you guys are like, oh, yeah, this isn't good, Jeremy. And I thought it was good to keep playing, and you guys were like, no, 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 I, I was knocked out. But I remember you went the, – the funniest part of the story was my brother-in-law – he wasn't my brother-in-law at the time – was my roommate living in the basement back home in Ohio. And remember that I needed my insurance card. And we couldn't get a hold of him. Sounds right. I don't remember that part. Yeah. We couldn't get a hold of him. And then he didn't believe you guys because you guys had to call because I couldn't even talk with my lip. Yeah. So, yeah. Finally, finally, Blair came through. 
got the insurance card, and then you and I, I think it was just the two of us, went to the hospital. No, no, no. No, no. All four of us went to the hospital. We all four. Oh, right. Milhouse was there, too. And so, viewers, he's there. So I'm like 18, 19 years old, okay? And our friend Josh had had just graduated Bible college, you know, and and then Sean was like a a teacher for like high school or middle school, like college graduate. Like both of these guys are clearly like the mature adults, right? So they ditch me in the hospital waiting room and they go out to the car. And so now I'm Jeremy's caregiver while they're giving him morphine <laughs> and they're stitching him up. Like the ladies having me sign papers and stuff. And I'm just like, what the heck is going on? I don't know what's going on. And I'm just like, uh, what the heck? These guys, they left me here. You know? Like Did yeah. they go didn't they go to like Sonic or something? They went yeah, I feel like they went and got snacks or something and like <laughs> I'm just I'm in this hospital waiting room by myself. Like Dude, as like an eighteen, un- nineteen unreal. year old. I don't know what's going on. It was a mess. It was a mess. Dude, that guy, I'm telling you, though, he was a miracle that he was working that night because had he stitched up my lip crooked, to this day, I'd probably be crooked. Yeah. Do you remember his split, name? Cl- no, I don't, but it split clear up there. But I remember he's like, you know, how bad is it? And he's like, I'm going to give you some morphine. So right in the rear rear hindquarters, a little shot of morphine, and I was ready to roll for the stitches. Yeah, morphine's amazing. But, I did it when I broke my arm before. Yeah, so. you can see why people can get hooked on that stuff. Oh, sure. You're in a different world, man. It's, it's yeah. incredible. So, yeah, thank God for Dude, it. A, because it. What a funny story. Yeah, that was a wild, a funny story. wild trip. I forgot mm-hmm. about that. Um, yeah. My wife had a question for you. Speaking of like TV shows and all that stuff, or did you have anything else you wanted to add to that story? No, no, go ahead. Um. So she was watching uh, a show called Arranged or Arranged Marriages, mm. and she wanted me to ask you: Would you ever allow someone like her, or who would you allow to arrange a marriage for you? Oh wow, that's an interesting question. So then I thought. I kind of took it another step further. Would you rather? Yeah, you know, mm. there's two people to choose from that are going to arrange this marriage. My wife or Josh? Who would you allow to arrange that <laughs> marriage? Oh, definitely not Josh. Because uh, he'd be like approaching it from like a coaching standpoint of like, oh, no, so I think who, this would be good. Would and it'd be like a joke. So. Describe like just, what, who Josh would, would give you. What could you envision? Even, it would just be someone that I'm just like totally like, no. Like, what? No. No. And he's like, no. It would just be like a joke. It would be like the shirt's on again, off again, on again. It'd be just, <laughs> it'd be something like that where, and he'd be trying to convince me like, no, Jay Rich, like, this is great. And then he'd be like, I don't know if this is the right person or not. Like, it would just be a mess. So, like, yeah, i definitely pick Mariah in that instance. But who would I pick um, to pick someone like that for me? I don't I guess I feel like in this life, I'm probably most like my sister. We have a very similar sense of humor, um, similar values and stuff like that. So I think I would pick her to pick someone for me if that was a real scenario, which we know that it's not. So, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. I just, or she's got your sense of humor that could backfire because she could be like, Oh yeah, I've been wanting to do this for years. No, no, no. I don't think, no, she's got my sense of humor, but she has a heart. I think that's the difference between us. <laughs> so she like considers people's emotions and feelings and, all that mm-hmm. kinds of stuff. And like, I, you, I do, but I usually don't do it until afterwards. I feel like I'm getting better at it, but she's real good at like in the moment, like watching what she's saying or whatever. So I guess that's probably who I'd pick, but yeah, that makes that's, sense. 
that's not a real scenario, but no. So then she, the follow up to that is she said, ask him, would you rather, uh, and this, this would be, uh, you know, televised and it's going to be the arranged and they're going to have two, two contestants on the show. Just one. Two. It's all they could two. find. That's all they could find. <laughs> they searched high and low, you know, they and were like, the would one, you like to, would you like to audition to be with the, uh, the runner-up from season eight, Diabetes Alone. <laughs> <laughs> he made it two days before going into a diabetic coma. Here's a picture of the man wearing a skin-colored T-shirt. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah. No, that's no, that was perfect. Yeah, I like it. I think that's exactly how they would sell it. Yeah. So, contestant one is Drop Dead bombshell but zero personality it's like talking to a, a wall doesn't laugh doesn't have a sense of humor doesn't get jokes just i mean aloof as they come just not with it i don't want to say like handicapped but pretty, I mean, pretty close okay <laughs> or the homeliest of homely, okay. no, you but can't. the personality to die for, just hilarious, thinks you're the funniest thing ever, is thoughtful, is caring, is wise, is compassionate, is all of these things that could, you, you can't imagine in one person. But when I say homely, I mean, just imagine homely. Why can't I, can I just pick no one? <laughs> do i have to pick someone no because you're coming off of alone and you can't be alone anymore so you have to pick someone so i feel like it's i don't know what's easier to teach <laughs> is it easier to try to like like sit down with this super beautiful woman and like teach her that the office is funny or is it better off taking like this super great personality woman and being like Hey, have you thought about plucking your eyebrows or shaving your beard? <laughs> you thought about tweezing your mustache out? Like, what's what is easier? I think is the question. I guess that would be my follow up question to Mariah. Like, what does she think is easier? What can you fix in a person? And not that like you're just focused on the physical, right? But there's got to be that element of. There's got to be some kind of attraction here, right? It does. It, it yeah. can't just be that. I don't know. So, yeah. And if you're going to, you know, give your wife a kiss and she's got, you know, a mustache going on, you've got no body hair, dude. That would that'd yeah. be rough. It'd be one thing if I had a mustache because then I could like convince myself like that was just my mustache. It's just my mustache, but. <laughs> When I don't have any hair at all, it's like, no, that's definitely her mustache. Dude, right? you described her well, too, with the unibrow. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, like a weirdly placed mole on her face or something. That kinda, <laughs> yeah, moles kind of – yeah, moles are creepy. I've got one on my back, but, like, if you got one, like, on your face that's, like, growing hair, that kind of weirds me out. Yeah, you got to go and get that thing just – Taken off, yeah, or at least the hair removed from it. I don't know how they if they can like laser do that, but yeah. No offense to any of our listeners out there <laughs> with facial with, hair, with hair, <laughs> facial moles with hair growing out of them. No offense, none at all. Don't take any offense. Just disregard. So I, we had an interesting uh, interaction. Yeah, let's get into those same, on that same topic. We pull in on Saturday, so took the van out, got the van cleaned out, the car wash. It just needed it. It's just getting sure. messy. Come back, go to pick up my wife. We're going to go to that softball thing I was telling you about. And the garage door is open. I'm like, that's odd. So and there's a car in our, our driveway, and I'm like, whatever. Someone's here you know, doing work on the house. Episode, I think, seven or eight. Yeah, I think it was eight. You remember me telling you the story about our uh, our pool girl. Oh, yeah. Well, she's camped out in our garage at our house. 
doing and what? I have no idea what she's doing in there. I have no idea. I, I didn't really care to ask too much. But she's like, uh, you know, if you guys need me to get out of here, just let me know. And I'm just like, you know, you're already in the garage. What? I don't care. The garage is a, a disaster filled with just junk. And my kids are like, look at all that garbage in the garage. I'm like, yeah, you just, they need to clean it out. Looks like stuff that's been there for like the last, you know, four decades. So I don't know what she was doing there. Apparently just hanging out, waiting um, Jim Bob was replacing the pool pump. I think the motor was bad, so he was replacing that. So she's just hanging out. That's his real literally, name. Literally hanging out. His real uh, name is Jim know. Bob. I don't know. I need to meet him. Maybe I can try and get a picture with him. That would be funny. You should try to so, do it. I'll try to get that for you. Send that on over. That would be awesome. Yeah, so it was, it was definitely interesting just to roll up, and I've never stayed at a place before where you've got the the pool lady and the mowing crew just hanging out in your garage. Yeah, that's weird, and the fact that the garage is like full of junk too, like that's weird that they would run a house out that's just like trashed. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. So it's that's also my weird that. Interesting. It's also weird that the guy filming this podcast is like sitting close to his camera so to not show his skin tight t shirt to people. <laughs> That's also just kind of weird. I don't know why he would do that. He wanted to change, but Jeremy's like, no, keep it on. It'll be funny. So here we oh, are yeah. doing more t shirt tricks for my friends, but at this time I'm 33 <laughs> and I'm in my own home. So, yeah. And you so, were sitting like this a while ago, too. So. I've been sitting, you know, yeah, sitting like this, you know, just trying to look, you know, if I do this, sometimes my arms will look a little muscular. So, and you can't tell when my shirt comes up or not, because it's the same color as my stomach. <laughs> so that's, that's a blessing. <laughs> yeah, dude. So interesting interaction that I had with myself. With Friday. yourself? Yes. I was all by myself. Friday, I'm back in my car out of the parking lot at work and we have a lone telephone pole that sticks up in the parking lot. And I was just backing up slow, like five miles an hour. And I smash into the back of this telephone pole. And try to guess what I yelled. Two words. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Oh, bleep. No. I yelled, Mother Trucker. I yelled, Fudge Muffin. <laughs> What's in his heart? Muffins filled with fudge, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. And that's why he's obese. That's why he's struggling to lose weight. Because on his mind, even in stressful situation, is some kind of a muffin. Okay? Dude, little Debbie has you on lockdown. Yes, Deb. Deb. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah, dude. I don't know. Like, no I smacked way. it and I was like, fudge muffin. <laughs> it didn't make any sense. And then I got out of the car and I was so thankful for the trailer hitch that was on the back of the car because that's the only thing that smacked in. It sticks out like an inch farther oh, than, like, the, man. than the back bumper and the glass and the back of the car and everything else. So... Yeah, saved me. There's not a there's not a mark on the car. So Dude, that's amazing. Super thankful. Yeah. Super thankful. So Yeah, that's a bummer if that happens. <laughs> yeah, I was glad. I was glad. And then later that night I picked the kids up and I was we were going back home and we're in this we're in Subway and they got these foot long cookies. So I'm buying this foot long. Have you heard of these foot long cookies? No. no. Yeah, so they make a foot long chocolate chip healthy. cookie. It's five bucks. So you can't get, you go in the subway. They used to have the $5 foot long. Dude, cheapest sub in that place now is like $11. It's crazy. No. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Do they ever run a special or is it always that expensive? It's always that expensive now. So, yeah, but they have, the special they have is, they have a $3 foot long pretzel. They have a $2 foot long churro. And then they have a $5 foot long chocolate chip cookie. 
And so I figured I'll get a chocolate chip cookie for the kids to split. They heat it up in the oven. So it's like, okay, it's a step above like a gas station snack, you know, at least it kind of feels homemade. That's all I can do for you kids. Right. Well, in line, there's an Amish guy. And I didn't realize he was Amish at first because he had on an Under Armour uh, beanie cap. And then he had on like a Nike coat or something. But then I look at his pants and it's that Amish blue jean material. You know, yep. it's not yep. quite blue jeans. And there's no buttons on or there's no zippers on them or anything. It's just like the Amish, like the Amish pants straight leg down. And then I see the back of his hair sticking out of his hat, and it's like the knife cut hair, how they're not allowed to use anything to cut their hair or whatever. And he's got on Bluetooth headphones, and he pulls a cell phone out of his Amish pants. And I'm just like, what are we doing? Like, why not just get the pants? Why not just get the blue jeans and cut your hair with scissors? Like, what's going on? What are we doing? You know? Like, it just doesn't make any sense to me. So... Amish Did you listeners. say anything to him? No, I didn't say anything. I just ordered a cookie, and then he came back into line, like because he had he was in front of me, and then he's like, "You mind making me two of those?" And she was like, "Sure." So then she made his before she made mine, even though I had ordered before him, but because he was ahead of me in line. <laughs> but yeah, and he spent like a ton of money there at Subway, and then I don't know, it just didn't make any sense to me, and I'm not trying to judge the guy, but. Like, I'm trying to put the pieces together. And it's like, you're paying this dude to drive you around. You're using a cell phone. He had a debit card that he paid with, Bluetooth headphones. And it's just like, why not just have normal pants? If that's the only thing that's separating us at this point, what is going on? Is that the only thing that's separating? Well, I mean, I think so, right? Because... He's riding there in a car using Bluetooth, Nike yeah. coat, Under Armour thing. And like, yeah, he's going home to his house that doesn't have electricity or anything. But I'm just like, that just seems crazy to me. And maybe I'm not thinking is- about it right, but it threw me off. Yeah, that that is interesting for sure. Yeah. So I've heard, though, because I... Um- yeah, I know a few folks in the Amish community and great folks. And it's interesting because the whoever's in charge of that order during that time, they kind of set the guidelines of what's acceptable versus what's not. And so there's some that are like more of like an older order, more strict. And then there's some that are just a lot looser. Or, so he must be part of the, you know, the loose group. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. But I'm like, dude, that's insane. So. I don't know. And then when I was at Subway, too, something else that threw me off, and I've been seeing this everywhere. I feel like tipping has gotten out of hand. Too much. (laughs) Okay? So I'm at Subway, order the cookie, it's $5, pops up on the screen, and, you know, do you want to leave a tip? And, like, you can hit no tip, you can hit 10%, 15%, 20%, and I'm just like, what? Like, what are we doing? I go into Domino's Pizza over the weekend, and then it's like, you know, the guy's like, it's going to ask you if you want to leave a tip. And I'm like, there's no shame with this guy just asking me for a tip. And I'm like, I came inside to pick the pizza up so we didn't have to get into this. Like, if I wanted to tip, I'd have just had it delivered to the house. You know what I yep, mean? And then you'd tip. Yep. Like, yep. what are we doing? I'm not. No, I so don't tell me tip the you. appropriate places for tipping. I don't think, I think the appropriate places for tipping is someone that is making a tipped wage. That's what I think. I think that if you're working at Cracker Barrel serving tables and you make four bucks an hour, that's a tipped wage. We need to give you a tip. I think if you're working at Panera Bread and you're making 10 bucks an hour to make my bagel, I'm not tipping. I'm sorry. I'm not, yeah, I'm. I'm not a tipper at the coffee shop either. I know a lot of people are. And I'm like, I would tip. I feel like, you know, I'm tipping before I even got the coffee, before I even got the bagel. Like, what am I tipping based on? Why didn't I just pay more? Why didn't you just charge me more for the bagel? Mm. I don't know. Like, maybe if I had like a really great experience and like the cashier was just like above and beyond and I got the drink and I'm like, 
wow, that was awesome. Then I can go put a dollar in the tip jar or something. But like, I'm just not handing out extra money to people that are not making a tipped wage. Like you're already making 12 bucks an hour to make me this coffee, 15 bucks an hour, whatever it is. The coffee was six bucks. Like, no, I, I'm sorry. Mm. I can't. I can't. Yeah, no, that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, I agree. It definitely has gotten out of control for sure. Because I agree that I think there's sometimes where I'm like, are we really? I mean, soon I'm going to start going through the grocery store and it's going to be asking instead of donating to the food bank, would you like to leave a tip? Yeah. It's like, yeah, I, I'm with you on that. I, so I'll leave a tip at a coffee shop and I know they're typically making more, but not always. And I think too, a good, someone who's really good at what they do, they sure. know the value of like, of relationships. If I go to a coffee shop and I feel like I'm talking to a wall and they couldn't be more disinterested, I'm principled. So I still leave a dollar tip, but there's sometimes where I'll leave a nice tip, but I'm like, listen, if you can't smile or be friendly or be kind or anything, I think I have a few, on a few occasions, not left a tip. What's but a restaurants, nice tip? So at a coffee shop. My, my standard tip at a coffee shop is two bucks. I always leave two Man. bucks. Plus. Generous. So I, I'll do that. There's sometimes I've, you know, if it's awesome service and above and beyond, and you're just like, okay, this, this, and this is genuine, like you just know, like this is genuine who this person is. I've left $10 tips before. Dude, must be nice. Just Just doing that. Restaurants, I'm a big proponent of that. I have, in my previous life, I have served before Cracker Barrel. Thank you. Yeah. And it's amazing to me how often that people will go out, people that appear they have money, and they have enough money to go out to eat. So if you have enough money to go out to eat, you need to be tipping. Sure. Uh, especially when I think, I think, the, yeah, the tip, I think our wage is like three or four bucks an hour, something super low. And the biggest pet peeve in the tipping world is you go out to eat and you take your family out to eat and you walk away from that table without tipping a single penny. Sure. So <clears throat> I know that there's a, you know, a lot of people did not like to get families as a general rule because they would were poor tippers. I'll typically always do 25 to 35%. Man, that's a good tip. A nice tip. But, and we ch we're changing the perception of families, in my opinion, because I always like the kids to, to give some money to. So we'll, you know, I'll give them all a couple bucks to extra, you know, extra to be able to tip and stuff like that. Because I want them to realize like, hey, they served us. And so we're going to tell them thanks. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. No, I think that's good. I, you know, I, I am totally fine tipping. I'm not like a stingy tipper when I go to the restaurant. You know, I'm, I don't know. The, the bill was... 30 bucks, 28 bucks, and I left a $6 tip last time we went out. 20%. That's 20%. Like, I'm okay with that, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like, but I'm not, yeah, it's because the person's on a tipped wage. And I think about that. Like, okay, we're taking like 20, 30 minutes of this person's time. They're going to be able to do this three, four times this hour. They can make 24 bucks an hour, like that's a decent wage, you know? Yeah. Like, okay, let's take care of this person. They're doing a good job. Um, you know, if they're a terrible server, I'm still going to leave a tip, but it's not going to be as good as if it's a good server. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and you got to earn that. Sure. And there's been servers that were really good and it's like, man, let's leave them, you know, you know, let's leave them a 50% tip or whatever. Like that's mm -hmm. awesome. But I just don't like, tipping people that are that are not on a tipped wage yeah it just feels it just it's i think it's because it's gotten out of hand like i could do it at a coffee shop and i liked it when they just had the jar when they didn't put it on the the digital thing because i'm yeah. like 
then it's <clears throat> awkward. Like you're asking for it. Like, oh, it's going to ask you a question. And it's like, you're, you're like asking me for money at this point when that just seems unprofessional. When it's yeah. like, hey, the tip should be like an above and beyond thing, yeah. not like every yeah. customer is going to give me money. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, and I'm with you. No, it's it's okay. I know you're not. It's fine. You're tipping the coffee baristas. I'm not. <laughs> I have done it before. Like if it's just, you know, it's someone that's really kind and like – or it's a place that I've gone to multiple times and been taken care of every time. It's like, okay, yeah, I'll leave a tip here. But yeah, I don't know. And especially like mom and pop mm. places, not like corporate places, you know, like a Starbucks. I'm not leaving a tip at a Starbucks. Dude, we don't even go to Starbucks. Oh, well, I've been a couple of times. Have you? That's kind of a yeah. shame. I'll have to let the kids know that Jay Rich goes to Starbucks. They'll be a little yeah, disappointed. Yeah, I... I like to vote with my dollars. I do. I don't know. I do. But I've been a couple times. I think over this past year, I've been like, in 2023, I probably went to Starbucks three or four times. So it's not an all the time thing. Not bad. By any means. Not but bad. I'd rather go to like Tremont Coffee, like a small coffee shop, mm -hmm. and support the local for sure. But That's your heartbeat. You're a local guy. Yeah. I like to think so. Tell me about your five top uh, local flavors. Yeah. Or so are we talking about that for wings? Yep. So this is probably our last segment. We're, we're rolling up on an hour here. Viewers, mm -hmm. um, we're trying to keep it to like an hour 15 is our goal. So uh, hopefully that's okay. Um, do you want to like go back and forth on these? Well, before we – okay, so before we get into wings, do you get bone in or bone out for wings? Um, if there, I will usually get bone in. That's my okay. go-to. Okay. If there is some kind of special deal going on, like the 50 cent boneless night or something like that, then mm -hmm. I'll get the boneless. But otherwise I go to the bone in. Do you like the advantage? The, I just like the meat. I feel like it's more natural mm -hmm. and I like to eat them. I like to like, I don't know, put the wing, just kind of bite, twist it around, get all the chicken off of there. It's a good time. Give so. us, maybe give us like a little uh, example. Like you got one in your hand right now. You just, so you're literally putting this whole thing in your mouth. Yeah. So I'll do that with the, with the wing piece, not like the leg bone piece. The wing piece. The whole wing, but, you just slide it in, and then your mouth is just going nuts. No. Hands are just, free? One hand, okay? Okay. So you got the wing, and then you put the wing in, and you bite down, and then you pull, and the the bone comes out, and the chicken stays in. It's an art. You've got to practice this. This okay. isn't something you're just going to do, okay? Okay. So, Yeah. I didn't know if this was like a bird defeatherer where, you know, you put this bird in this machine that comes out and no feathers. Like, I didn't know if you just slid it in and went no, to town you gotta and then practice just like this. popped it out. Yeah, you got to practice. I have a friend that doesn't eat any meat with a bone in it. And it's kind of weird. But I like... Hold on, let me guess. Let me guess. Christian You don't Croc. know him. No, you don't oh, know okay, him. okay, okay. But, okay. Uh, yeah, Christian Crock would be a good guess. So... <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um top sauces. <clears throat> it's it's hard. I feel like I go through phases where I like things hotter and then I like things you know more flavorful. But something I always go back to, are we doing number 1 first or number 5 first? Let's go let uh let's go number 1. You hit your number 1, I'll hit my number 1. We'll kind of go back and forth. <clears throat> I'm going to go with my number one sauce of teriyaki. Teriyaki, really? Teriyaki, yes. I'm sorry. For number one. I'm sorry. I'm between that and another one, but yeah. Wow. I know. I know. So how, does, how does teriyaki take the cake on that for a number one? That seems like four or five on the list. I just was thinking about it. And, like, if I sat down right now 
I would order teriyaki. At least one of the sauces would be teriyaki. Dude, one night we need two. to go out and get some wings, and we could even record maybe at the wing place. That'd be a lot of fun. That'd be fun. Yeah, viewers, leave us a comment if you want us to do it. <laughs> actually, actually, leave us a comment if you don't want us to do it, <laughs> and then we won't do it. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm sorry. I know it's it's an unconventional okay. choice, but you're an unconventional guy, though. Too. That's true. I'm wearing a skin colored T-shirt. <laughs> okay. Um. So mine is going to be very specific uh, to one location, but it's still my general go-to anywhere I go is the medium sauce. But okay. specifically. Krause's over on Lake. If you've never had their wings with a medium sauce, dude, you are missing out. There's something special in it. It's it's to okay. die for. So okay. to me, medium is kind of like the house blend of coffee where it's consistent, it's go-to, it's flavorful, but it's not overbearing where it's like super hot and you're just getting the heat coming through. So I feel like mm. medium helps me to really get a sense of if it's a very good tasting sauce. Okay. So that's my go-to. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Um, my number two is going to be Asian Zing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's get all the Asians, okay? <laughs> I know. I know what you're thinking, but I really <laughs> like it. I I can't I can't explain it to you. I really maybe like this, it. Maybe your two contestants, the homely one, could be Asian. Both of them. <laughs> whip whip up some sauce. That's that's the deal. That's that's how we'll decide who's making the best wings here. <laughs> so yeah, they have it at BW threes, um, but then they also have it at Applebee's. So they'll do a half price. Hmm the half price appetizers and yep. one of the sauces they have, they have a, like a medium Buffalo and then they have a honey okay. barbecue and then they have an Asian zinc. And so I've, I've gotten it a lot and I don't know everywhere I go, there's some kind of like Asian style sauce. I like it. So is that, do you feel like you get it because of like, like WG WG White Guilt <laughs> Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, my white guilt is uh yeah, so I'll get that and a side of uh I'll get the Asian zing on the fried chicken. So <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's messed up. But yeah, Dude, so that that's got to be one of my favorite things on a menu. If you can get amazing fried chicken dude yeah that's... fried chicken and waffles oh i'm with man. you 100 percent. yeah so i'm going asian i'm sorry what do you got for number two this so this is tough but i, I either or can go for me but i'm gonna go with my what i will typically do is, is i'll go with the garlic parmesan yeah classic i it's like so garlic good parm. yeah are you and dipping I, I this stuff to give... in ranch no, I I like just that flavor coming through, truthfully. Mm. I like sauce. I have sauce on everything. Do you? Yeah, I'm real saucy. Seriously. I you know, it's it's always Are you ranch I'll, on everything? Unless it's um if it's buffalo, then I'll do blue cheese. Okay. But typically ranch, <laughs> yeah. I like the sauce. I didn't know if you were like duck sauce or soy sauce since you got like a little bit of an Asian thing going on. I do like stir fry 88 in the mall. That's my mall go to. <laughs> oh <my goodness. laughs> Why is that funny? Why is that funny? I'll go stir fry 88. I'll get the, I'll get the three meat combo. I'll, I'll do no rice or noodle, but I'll do extra veggie. And then I'll do uh, Mongolian chicken, bourbon chicken, and um, like the, I forget what it's called. It's like a spicy or no, I'll, I think I'll do orange or pineapple or something like that. One of those chickens. So Dude, how often do you go to the mall to eat food? Um, we used to go when the kids were, when the kids were littler, 
just because okay. they would be picky and it'd be like, I want this, she wants that, Noah and Jonah want this, Ella wants that, and then we could kind of like get whatever we want and like all be together. So oh, gotcha. we did it, you know, <laughs> we were doing that like once a month for a while back in the day, okay. but haven't done it in, you know, a year But you still remember so, that whatever. order? Yeah, I've done, I've went there since, but I haven't taken the whole family. Like, I remember we did this church event, and then afterwards, there was a group of us guys, and uh, I was just like, dude, I'm in the mood for some Chinese food from the mall. And then a group of us went up there and ate Chinese. Dude, so, last time I had Chinese, now I love Chinese food, but my wife and I got it. Someone told us, like, a local spot in Maslin. You got to get this Chinese food. So we got it. Dude, there must have been so much MSG in this stuff that we were both ready to die. We were literally on the couch, like laying there in agony, headaches, just sick as could be. And it wasn't food poisoning. We didn't throw up, but it was like something in there was in excess and it just shut our bodies down. So it's been a minute since I've had some good Chinese food. I believe it. Yeah, they put all kinds of stuff in there. So. I like Panda Express. They make a good, I get the Beijing beef. Man, you're getting me rolling on food. I'm getting hungry. So Dude, that's speaking funny. I haven't of had that, Panda in a while. We promised the viewers we would fast. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fast update. Yeah. Yep. So I fasted on Wednesday. I did 24 hours. I did nice. 20, 20 hours on Thursday. 22 hours on Friday, 22 hours on Saturday, 20 hours on Sunday, and I did 21 hours today. Dude, good for you. So you're rolling like a small eating window then. I'm rolling one meal. Now the problem has been dialing in that meal because like the first day I did it, I just like gorged myself for like a straight <laughs> hour. I don't even know how many calories I fudge took rounds, in. Like, fudge rounds, fudge rounds. Too much sugar. Like, I was just like, yeah. So, I want... What did what you I'm, go with? Like, describe your your coming off of this fast meal. Yeah, so I ate um, just crap junk food. Like, I had some cookie... Like, well, I started out and I was like, all right, I'm going to have some eggs and some pork tenderloin and some veggies. And then afterwards, I'm like, I want some cookies. I want uh, a snack cake from the cupboard. I want some Cheetos. Like it was just too much food. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I, what I want to do is get to the point where I'm like doing one meal. So I've been doing it consistently. So what's that? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, today's Monday. So that is day six Dude. of doing this. Nice. So I feel good with it. Like by 5.30 today, I was ready for food. Like really yeah. ready. Yeah. So, um, but what I want to do is like dial it in and just have like a fairly normal meal, like 2,000 mm -hmm. calories or so, mm -hmm. but like a balanced meal of mainly meat, veggies, stuff like that. And then if I want to have something sweet, I can do that, but it's, it's all I'm eating that day. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but it's been good, good. for you. It's, yeah, there's been a spiritual aspect of it as well. Like someone from church had encouraged me to try fasting more. And so I wanted to do that. And then from a health standpoint, I feel good. And it's nice not having to worry. But the key has been, let me grab it uh -oh. here. Uh-oh. I know, hang on, the headphones are out. The key for me, speaking of MSG, um, <laughs> what I've been, I, well, it's a, it's a chicken broth base. So there's no sugar or anything like that in it. It's mainly just salt. Like there's a lot of salt in here, but what I've been doing is in the morning I'll have coffee and then I'll have this around lunchtime because like the first two days I was getting like headaches and feeling woozy and stuff, but mm -hmm. this has got what do we got? 900 milligrams of salt for two teaspoons. Is it good salt or is it like the chemical salt? Salt includes sea salt is the first ingredient. Nice. Okay. And then you get into melodoxin, chicken blend, chicken fat, cooked chicken, onion powder, dehydrated vegetables, 
So there's def you could probably definitely find something healthier if you wanted to, but I was just interested in the <clears> salt. <throat> so mm -hmm, then mm -hmm. I'm able to go, you know, till four or five o'clock. Does no that headache. break your fast though? Do you know? I don't think so because it's just salt basically. So mm, just with there's some flavor in here. There's some onion powder and stuff like that. So like if you wanted to get like hyper with it, yeah, but yeah. you're not getting any carbohydrates. So, yeah, I don't know. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's a that might be a hack for some some of the listeners that are looking to try and extend a fast. So yeah, this but I think it's the salt that usually gets me. I'll start getting a mm -hmm. headache. I'll start feeling like woozy, dizzy, and I'm pretty sure it's just salt. So since I've yeah. implemented this, I I've been drinking this at like ten o'clock, and kind of fills you up and. Mm get you through the rest of the day so yeah dude good for you that's cool that's really yeah. cool so yeah i did those six days um one was a full 24 and then it was like 22 20 21 whatever but um how did your three-day fast go so i made it to just shy of two days i was um I'm going to test again, but I'm going to wait. I think I, because I did back-to-back -back weeks for extended fast, and I've done a little research. You want to kind of space it out a little bit more. Mm. So I'm going to wait a couple more weeks and then try it again. But I don't know if it's my body detoxing or if my body's limitations kind of start hitting that wall on day two. And so trying to push through that. I definitely know this time I wasn't dehydrated because I was doing a ton of electrolytes. And it's they're super clean, plenty of salt in them. I was also adding some additional salt and water, so I know I wasn't dehydrated, but I just felt like um, I was telling Josh. I said I felt like Biden, just a little bit of mental <laughs> fog. Mm. So, and I didn't want to be. I didn't want to be walking. Or I was going somewhere with the kids, and I was like, I don't want to be driving them. And feeling this way. Yeah. Because I just, I, I could tell something was off. So I'm going to sure. give it a whirl in a couple more weeks and see if I can extend it out a little bit further and, and go for three days. I'd like to hit 72. So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but to be determined if I can keep pushing out past, you know, past that time frame. But yeah, still good. That's cool. Still good. Yeah. I'm going to so. keep going. I think I'm going to keep going with the 24s or close yeah. to it be like a two hour eating window. Like tonight I just had dinner and then that was it. So I'm not going to have anything else, but. Well, and once yeah. you start hitting 24 hours, the body starts to just use fat. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you can extend out, extend out any further, you can definitely see some real benefits from it. But yeah. 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 I want to, that's yeah. Just less food. That's the key, yeah. I think. Less, less going in, you know? Um, All right, so give we, us number three on the... Yeah, uh, we better finish out with stop. this here. Uh, we're coming up on the end. So I'll do my last three. Um, Caribbean jerk would be my number three. <laughs> Why is that funny? That's a delicious sauce. Uh, if, if you would have paid me money... <laughs> there's no way to put teriyaki, number one. Sure. I didn't even know Asian zing really existed. Caribbean jerk. Of course it does. Yeah. You it's got an interesting sauce. flavor, a, a palate. I'll say yeah. that. Yeah. So, um, so we got teriyaki number one, Caribbean, or I'm sorry, Asian zing number two, Caribbean jerk number three. We're going to go Carolina gold number four. Ooh, there we go. Okay, now we're getting a little bit better. I like that. Yeah. Is that a um, BW3's? I don't know, but yeah, it's like a golden, it's like a golden barbecue sauce. It's like a mustard barbecue sauce blend. I, I like mm -hmm, the flavor. Mm -hmm. So, and then, so that'd be my number four. And then number five, I'm going buffalo sauce in particular from Roosters. It's more of like an oil base. Yes. Yes, yeah. dude, that so is an amazing flavor. Yeah, yeah, it's more of an oil-based sauce instead of like a like a creamy sauce, and so I like that one a lot. So that's my five: teriyaki, 
um, Asian Zing, Caribbean Jerk, Carolina Gold, Buffalo from Roosters. Top Dude, five. I like this specific. It's funny that you said that. I, I So I've got, obviously, the mild. I've got the garlic parm. Then I've just got traditional barbecue. Mm-hmm. Just classic. Your traditional, classic. Um, Buffalo is my second, or is my fourth pick. I just love that because if like in rooster stands, that's the one that I was thinking of because it's a, it's a delicious heat. Mm-hmm. It's just got good flavor. Yeah. And then I top it off with number five and there's times I'll pick this for my first pick. If I'm going out somewhere is a mango habanero. That's a good sauce. It's good. So, it's a little hot. It's a little, little bit of yeah. heat there. Some places it can be a little too much heat for this yeah. uh, this guy, but as a general rule, it's it's pretty good. Yeah. So there yeah, we go. Fun. Top five Dude, sauces. It's fun. Now I'm in the mood for wings. Well, instead, just go get a Debbie little Debbie snack cake. Yeah. Why not get a fudge <laughs> round instead? It is eleven o'clock at night. Get a fudge round. Lay down in bed. Just your organs are screaming. <laughs> So, <laughs> sounds, sounds okay. good. Speaking, I know our time's up, but I have to say this because this is a throwback and it, I forgot about it until right now. Do you remember on those trips, you know, like the t shirt trip, like that story of the four of us going down there? Do you remember Millhouse's sna- like bedtime? And when I say bedtime snacks, he's in bed eating this stuff. No, I don't. <laughs> Did you forget? I, I can picture it. I can picture it, but I don't remember. Let's see. Oatmeal like cream pies. Fish. Okay. Oatmeal cream pies. Swedish fish. Yes. And high C. <laughs> yes. So Millhouse was a member of the African American community. <laughs> was or is? It <laughs> currently <laughs> is. But it's just like, dude, oh. I see in bed. Do you remember when they gave out those water bottles at that youth, <laughs> at that youth conference? And they said they took the labels off of them and they put a label on that said thirst for God. And it's supposed to be like something you set down on your dresser and you're looking at it in the future and like meditating on this. Like, man, I need to be thirsting after God. And he's just, he just like cracks it open in the car and starts drinking it. And I was like, dude, what are you doing? And it's just, it was insane. That guy was, that guy was crazy. So, dude, I wonder if he's got any teeth left after a, a bedtime snack like that your entire life. Yeah, you should find out. You should reach out to him. I don't have his contact anymore. He had the yeah, he, he moved away, moved back, so I don't have his contact. So I don't know how to get a hold of him. I think Maybe he's on Facebook. Find him on Facebook. Yeah, look him up. I deleted the app for a little bit. I'll get back on Did there. You? But yeah, yeah I want to take a little break. break. Yeah. So, all right, cool. All right, viewers. Well, that's episode nine in the books. Hour and 23 minutes worth. Jerry, you got anything else to add? No. Leave a comment. They won't. You could say it. We're offering them a dollar a piece for comments. Two dollars. <laughs> Two dollars per comment. Yeah, a so, dollar from each of us. And this yeah. is coming from the guy that doesn't tip. I don't so tip, but you I'm guys, willing to you tip guys, you for a comment. You guys better tap into that. It's not often that that generous wallet gets opened up. That's true. That's true. All right, guys. Thanks for coming along with us, you two dozen listeners out there. We appreciate you. Tell your friends. Tell your grandma. And we'll talk to you next week. Love you guys. See ya.